Okay, so let's move forward. And now we'll have Carlos Friasas, who's going to be speaking about some internet hijacks. So thank you, Carlos. Go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it was an excellent keynote that we have just had. Um, uh, I would like to start by thanking the, the, the organization and uh, everyone for, for having me. Um, so, uh, I'm Carlos Friasas. I work for the Portuguese National Research and Education Network, uh, which is FCCN, which is a unit of FCT, the National Foundation for uh, Technology. Uh, for technology. So uh, I work at the security team of uh, FCCN, which is uh, RCTS CERT, and I'm here to talk a bit about uh, something that I've been experiencing in the last years, uh, which uh, is Internet IJEX. And I, I would like to start um, thinking about uh, global internet disruption. So if someone wants to uh, seriously disrupt the internet, uh, where, uh, which, which target would they choose? Uh, would they go for submarine cables? Um, I guess there are uh, hundreds of submarine cable systems around the world. There is BGP that connects networks. It's on the scale of thousands. So. Um, I checked yesterday, and there are about uh, 75,000 uh, different autonomous systems, and uh, in, the, in the scale of millions, you have uh, domains. So uh, this talk is about the, the, the BGP, the, the, the networking, uh, the IP layer of uh, uh, how you can uh, um, do something uh, harm. So uh, first, for, for those that are not familiar with PGP, so uh, Border Gateway Protocol, it's a very uh, um, simplistic uh, protocol that has been enhanced uh, over the years. Uh, it has the characteristic of being a multi-protocol. So first you had IPv4. Uh, in the light, later years, uh, IPv6 was added. Um, and it's, for me, it's very simple. Uh, Someone may not agree with me, but well, uh, for me, this is just BGP is just I announce my prefixes and I re receive uh, prefixes from others. Uh, there are also some concepts about it. So um, there are upstreams and peers. So uh, I usually don't pay to uh, exchange traffic. So those are the pe my peers. And to upstream providers, uh, I, I usually pay to have my traffic uh, reach uh, any part of, uh, of the internet. So there are also uh, internet exchanges, uh, route servers that uh, permit, uh, that allow networks to do uh, multilateral peerings. Um, there is obviously the, also the, the concept of pushing traffic and receiving traffic. So uh, you, you can, you can send the, 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 your packets uh, through one side and receive, receive uh, packets from other networks uh, from, from, from uh, another side. Uh, the main uh, issue that uh, everyone must understand is that uh, country borders uh, are not the same as uh, internet borders. So uh, in BGP, you don't have countries, you have networks that mostly are uh, in one country or in more than one country. So uh, borders is uh, uh, a really uh, different concept in the internet. Uh, there is one uh, fundamental um, problem that was uh, highlighted recently with BGP, is that uh, it has too much exposure. Uh, so uh, Shadow Server recently uh, was, uh, well, they, they do research uh, and uh, they uh, found almost uh, 400,000 uh, accessible BGP speakers. So they are uh, likely to be uh, attacked and used on, uh, on attacks uh, against uh, third parties. So th this is a concern. This is something that must be tackled and uh, 
um, I think mostly the cybersecurity people need to be uh, aware about this, even if their knowledge about BGP is uh, not so broad. But, so now uh, about IJAX, which is the main topic that led me here. Um, first things first, I, I, I want to um, uh, discuss what is an IJAX, because uh, there are also leaks, which are accidents, but uh, an IJAX is uh, perceived as being something intentional. So uh, there are people that uh, announce prefixes to other networks that don't belong to them. And um, this is very bad. One, one bad thing for me is that uh, most people, or a lot of people, uh, simply um, just uh, uh, don't care because uh, they, they just think it's hard to tell if an incident is an hijack or a leak. Uh, I, I strongly disagree with that, and uh, it makes me furious sometimes because uh, accidents, don't, uh, uh, accidents don't have a span of weeks or months. So if something is done intentionally, uh, we can uh, be able to, with the help of research, to uh, understand what, what uh, is going on or what did go wrong uh, for uh, a period of time. And uh, another issue is that, uh, well, this, this is a snapshot from uh, Cloudflare's uh, radar, so um, thank you uh, for, for that. Cloud, Cloudflare is um, uh, providing uh, uh, almost a real-time uh, list of uh, incidents they see, and they classify as uh, ijacks. Uh, so uh, they also have a column with the degree of confidence, so uh, they say this is a, a, an IJAC with medium confidence or with uh, a higher uh, degree of confidence. So IJACs happen on a daily basis, and well, this doesn't seem to um, worry uh, too much people. Uh, I also uh, have uh, a, a, an issue with IJACs is that uh, it's not a problem only when an hijacker steals your prefix, but when you, as a third-party network, are talking to uh, um, a network that was hijacked. So if you intend to uh, talk to, uh, I don't know, YouTube, if someone hijacks YouTube, you will not get the service you, you are expecting to, to get. Uh, well, in YouTube was uh, probably one of the most not notable incidents uh, over the years. Um, there was uh, an order from the Pakistani government to, to, to Pakistani Telecom to um, um, censor some video or some censor the platform because it was showing some video they, they didn't like. And instead of blocking access to YouTube, they uh, leaked uh, uh, a prefix uh, from YouTube, and uh, every, suddenly uh, every, everybody in the world, or a, a big part of, of networks in the world, thought that YouTube was being uh, uh, served by Pakistani Telecom, which obviously it wasn't. So uh, they basically black hole the, black hole the service, and well, this obviously didn't went under the radar. There were some, also some. Uh, strange and some, some things that were probably uh, state-sponsored uh, actions. Uh, so the traffic from uh, South America that went through Belarus. So it, it was, uh, well, th these kinds of strange things happens, happen and it, uh, it shouldn't happen. Uh, th there is also uh, one um, well, at, at some point, uh, it, it, and this is what really um, awakened me, awake me for, for this uh, problematic, is that in 2018, uh, a guy that was doing, a company that, 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 that was doing uh, IJAX uh, for quite some time um, was um, reported uh, publicly in, in, in uh, in community forums. So uh, there was the fact that uh, this guy operated from Portugal. 
So uh, this was the original message on, on the Nanog list. And uh, well, I, I just want to share the, mainly the, 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 last, um, the last phrase, as I always ask rhetorically in cases like this, where, where are the grown-ups? So this was happening for quite a long time. Uh, prefixes, prefixes were being stolen, then the, uh, after some time uh, they were not announced anymore and more prefixes were stolen from, from other folks. So uh, I, th I think w at some point uh, even prefixes from uh, the US government were stolen and well, uh, uh, that, went, that didn't, didn't go very well. Uh, so this happened and uh, someone had to do something. That, that, that was the, the call for. Um, some years later, with a different um, actor, uh, we also seen uh, this. Uh, well, this was uh, this year, earlier this year, uh, we, uh, well, there was some, someone that was trying to connect to our platform and uh, we investigated, we do some kind of uh, due diligence and while we investigated, we found that this person had, uh, or this network uh, had announced uh, a route from a, a company that was uh, already closed in 2017. So this was basically grabbing a prefix that nobody was using and saying, well, now this is mine, so uh, you can send packets to these IPs uh, towards me. So. Uh, just to uh, say that while the 2018 problem was tackled, uh, there are still people here in Portugal that, that think that uh, yeah, the others are stupid enough to uh, still accept networks that uh, are not from them, that are not really them, uh, from their ownership. Uh, so comparing these two cases, uh, I must say that uh, the modus operandi was very, very, very different. Uh, so uh, the, the first case that was exposed in 2018 uh, was uh, research back uh, um, to, f to f uh, four years previously, and uh, several prefix, several hundred prefixes were um, discovered as being digest, and. The, the, um, uh, uh, as investigations proceeded, uh, the, the main aim for, for these uh, hijacks were sp spam operations. O on the second case, uh, well, this is, this, uh, as it's a case that it's so tiny, it's, it's still under most radars, and uh, as far as I know, it's, it has absolutely nothing to, to do with spam. So going on to uh, uh, end games uh, here. So um, one of the possible end games is to uh, divert some, someone else's traffic. Uh, another one is to influence algorithms and, uh, well, um, uh, for instance, to steal uh, cryptocurrencies. There have been several documented cases uh, between 2014 in 2022, uh, well, and probably more are ongoing, uh, but uh, maybe uh, they are not uh, noticed. And um, some other uh, possible uh, objectives of doing IJAX uh, are to escape attribution. So uh, if, um, if you do something wrong with uh, a network that isn't yours, you can say, no, no, this network is from that company that was, uh, um, that has closed operations uh, some years ago, so it wasn't me. Uh, or, or in some cases also to just, well, as IPv4 is uh, not cheap anymore, to just uh, grab, grab your, your part of IPv4 for free. Uh, so, what can we do collectively? So, uh, there are some initiatives. Uh, these problems were identified by a group of people some years ago. Uh, standards were developed, and uh, there is basically uh, RPKI. 
So uh, RPKI works uh, in a simplistic way by publishing uh, certificates associated with your uh, routes. So if someone tries to hijack them, uh, if you have a certificate, people can validate if the certificate uh, matches the, the, the network you declared it with. Uh, so there is also uh, two sides. So it's not just publishing the, um, the certificates. You also need to perform validation. And that's what is not, that's really is what, what is not uh, going uh, very greatly at the moment. Uh, we also need to talk more about it. Uh, so, um, if, if you uh, have uh, a published certificate about a certain prefix and network, and if you receive the same prefix from a different network, uh, you should drop it. So, uh, so, some people prefer to just de-prefer it, but in some cases, the safest way is really to, to drop it and not use the, the prefix. Uh, this is the uh, current uh, state of deployment of RPKI. Um, well, global is uh, about 38%, which is not very um, great. So uh, in Portugal, the, the measured value is uh, around 52%, which is better than the world, world average, but well, we still also have uh, a lot paths to cover. Um, again, here, uh, that data from uh, Cloudflare, so thanks again. Uh, continuing, so uh, we, well, me, me and other people uh, have been um, also uh, looking at another angle, which is the, that, that the industry stops using uh, LOAs, uh, letters of authorization. So, uh, in, in some cases, uh, hijackers, what they do is uh, they uh, sign a document saying they are the owner of uh, the certain uh, IP prefix. And for me, that's not uh, enough. So, uh, you can just sign the, a paper, sign a paper saying this is yours, but it's, it's not really yours. You need, you need uh, at this moment, with cryptographic assurance available, what you need to do is to be able to uh, sign your, your prefixes on the RPKI system. Um, this is uh, being worked at uh, first, the Forum for Incident Response and Security Teams, so uh, it's uh, a fairly open forum, so you can also follow this effort if you like. As a final um, food for thought, I would, I would uh, uh, like to raise the issue. So if m making the parallel with uh, IP networks, if someone decided to take away the, the telephony uh, prefixes in Portugal for 94, 97 and 98, what do you think it would happen almost instantly? So if, if someone was able to do this, to what, what would happen? My parallel with the IP network is that nobody is really uh, having any consequences on doing uh, these, uh, these hijacks. And these are the main takeaways, takeaways of this talk. So BGP is here. BGP is uh, still uh, going to be uh, important for the internet to work in the following, following years. Uh, it's not the most secure protocol, uh, but it's working. And uh, well, uh, I hope I've uh, transmitted the idea that hijackers, uh, IP hijackers, are uh, closer than you may expect. So you, we also have some of them operating in Portugal, and uh, and there are solutions to uh, make everyone know that who owns which IP. So. Uh, it's RPKI, and we need to advance uh, uh, in, a, in an operator, uh, at the operator level to, um, to deploy and uh, mainly to uh, make uh, the validation part also. So if, if uh, crap routing information is received, it must be dropped. Uh, so um, the, here are some references, and I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Uh, 
uh, microphone. I was too quick, probably. Someone, for, someone with a microphone? Or can we try without the microphone? Okay, Carlos, from Cloudflare. Uh, I think the, the problem is kind of in line what the keynote talk was about. Is the, well, uh, nobody is dying, so nobody is worrying. So here, here prob probably the incidents are not so um, so problematic that uh, people uh, understand that they m need to take some action. On, on another aspect, uh, I also uh, believe that there is a kind of a gap between the networking and the cybersecurity uh, side. So um, perhaps this perhaps this problem statement is in between uh, of the two teams, and well, the, for the networking guys. The routes uh, are arriving and uh, it's okay, so we will send packets if we receive routes. And for the security uh, guys, well, we are not managing routers, so this might be a problem for the networking guys. So uh, I think there must be some more cooperation between those two fields to, to tackle this, uh, this issue. And there are still no microphone again. Uh, any more questions? The organization, it seems, went some other place. So. <laughs> well, uh, I, I can also um, tell you about uh, another detail. Uh, I don't know if you are aware about internet.nl, which has a, a test for uh, testing uh, security, and it, is, uh, it, it shows a score between 0 and 100. Uh, as a part of their test, they uh, are already evaluating that if, uh, if the name servers that support the domain uh, are uh, under uh, an RTKI certificate. So if you don't have uh, a certificate over your, uh, over the route that covers your uh, uh, name servers, uh, your score will be lower. So that's probably a small incentive to tell your operators, please uh, do this so uh, I can get my security um, my security score uh, uh, better, so to, to improve my security score. Um, this, uh, this thing, um, well, the, the, the name servers are obviously important uh, because well, uh, if someone uh, diverts the route that covers them, they could set up uh, different name servers and uh, uh, anyone else in the world that uh, that is, is using that hijacked route route can uh, do nasty things with with your domain. So this is basically it. Uh, any more questions, or can someone go find Bruno or George? Uh,
Okay, so if there are no more, more questions, thank you.